and uh, Mon Mongolia. Um, yeah, just keep us in the loop and uh, yeah, um, continue to um, yeah, be in prayer. All right, so if you've got your Bibles, turn over to um, Genesis chapter 7. We'll be um, in and around that particular um, area of uh, Word of God. So that's uh, Genesis chapter 7. Um, so what was read to you was Genesis 7 uh, from verses 1 to 11. What I'll do is I'll read from Genesis 8, um, and I'll start from verse 1 and go down to 14. Um, Water there, or the... No, it's just water. Anyone? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, I'll read this passage and then, um, and yeah, when we'll get into, um, I suppose, God Remembers Us is what it's entitled. I've been kind of arming and arming with that title, but it uh, wasn't a big thing for me to be fair. Alright, so uh, Genesis chapter 8, beginning at verse 1, God's word says, And God remembered Noah. Okay, so that's kind of the main kind of focus, really. God remembered Noah. Uh, and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep, and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from the earth continually, and after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, uh, of the 17th day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month, in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. Came to pass at the end of the forty days that Noah opened the window of uh, the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven which went forth and to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. But also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. Uh, but the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him and unto the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth, and he put forth his hand and took her, and pulled her uh, unto, uh, pulled her in unto him, uh, into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth uh, the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth, and he stayed the yet uh, uh, stayed yet another. Or other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again to him anymore. And it came to pass in the six hundredth year, the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, uh, from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh, uh, on the yeah, on the on the seventh and twentieth day of the month was the earth uh, dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Uh, let's go before the Lord. Father, I do thank you for this time that we can gather together, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity to come and bring forth uh, your word uh, to the congregation here, Lord. I do pray that you would speak uh, through me, that, that, uh, that I wouldn't be in touch, Lord. Uh, that you will touch the hearts of uh, those here, Lord. Uh, Lord, I always, I suppose I always say this, but I strongly believe that you brought everyone here, uh, myself included, um, to, um, for a reason. And so please, I ask that you touch uh, the hearts of those that, that are needed, Lord, that you encourage uh, the hearts of those that are needed, and that uh, you would continue to fellowship and to continue to bandy about your word, Lord, uh, and speak of your word uh, as we continue to go forth. Uh, from this place as well. So again, we thank you for uh, the story. I uh, thank you for uh, your remembrance of Noah, Lord. And as we look through this, Lord, help us to just learn something from your word, Lord, uh, and that you'll be well pleased with this uh, service, Lord, and, uh, and this part of the service, Lord, as uh, your word is preached. Again, we thank you and just pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, so the opening question that I've got here um, above me is, have you ever felt forgotten? <coughs> By God, have you ever felt forgotten by God? And once in a while, you'll hear um, stories of um, uh, probably in America. I don't know. I don't want to kind of bash the Americans, but that's probably the most 
things that I see it from, right? The American television shows, but also in New Zealand, um, but of people getting uh, babies being left, forgotten about, left on in the, in the rubbish bins or on the Port Street or something like that. Um, in New Zealand, uh, it's um, probably not as much, but you still hear of stories of, of stuff like that happening as well. And it's gut-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching. Uh, it's, it's not good news. Right, as parents, um, parents out there, you've probably kind of been in a situation where you've forgotten your kids somewhere. <laughs> right? Um, and, and I don't know if you know this feeling, but you, you think everything's all good. Uh, yeah, and especially um, true of the younger ones, maybe three or four or younger, where you think, oh yeah, sweet, we know where they are. Next minute, oh, they're not over there. They're not over there, and there's just just this just feeling of your just heart going, boom, where are they? And then until you can actually either hear them or something, you kind of don't stop looking until it's, you know, until they're found, right? Um, yeah, praise the Lord, God's not like this, right? God doesn't, and so when we look at this uh, passage, and when we look at this word, remember, when God remembers Noah, and when he remembers you, he hasn't forgotten about you, so you can't really equate forgot to remembrance when we're looking uh, at this passage. Um, so we praise the Lord, but again, you've probably forgotten about God at times, and maybe in your life you've prayed, and God hasn't answered. Uh, maybe you've um, read the Bible, maybe you've gone through and, and, and felt that there's, there's, there's nothing... At the, God's not speaking to me. It could be that you're on a trial in your life and uh, that made you think that God was maybe on vacation and forgot about you and your problems. Um, and, and Noah may have felt like this after being on the ark for a while. So we look over to um, chapter 7 and in verse 1. It says, and the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house unto the ark, uh, for thee have I seen righteous uh, before me in this generation. Right? And he, he speaks to him from verses 1 to 4. And um, we see that he, he's been in the ark for a while. The whole world has been, has been destroyed, has been covered. All right, we all know this story on, on, on Noah and Noah's Ark, all right? So wait, I'll just take snippets and, and, and I suppose new stuff out of it. It rained hard on the Ark for 40 days and 40 nights. Now these guys, they had never experienced rain before in their lives. And then it just started to rain and it started raining hard. Now some people uh, like the sound of rain on a tin roof. Right, there's just some people out there that just I know Kimberly does. Um, I wonder if she's the only person. She might be the only person. I'm not too sure. I say some people. Anyone else like? Yeah, we've got a few people who, who like that sound, right? But this wasn't that situation. Right, it wasn't a soothing uh, put a pat of rain on the tin roof. Now it was raining for the first time. Waters was coming up, and the boat was starting to sway. So it's totally, totally different. I'm sure you wouldn't like this situation, right? Um, and then finally the rain had stopped so you, you're thinking about I suppose getting the shoes and all and, and the rain stopped and then all of a sudden all it is is just and Noah probably expected to hear from God at some point and if he did the Bible it doesn't report it here right? the Bible doesn't say that God was speaking to him and it could be that he hadn't spoken uh, to Noah until we see him speak to Noah, as I read in chapter 8, in verse 15. It says there, And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark. So from when he shut the ark to over when he opened, when it was open and he spoke forth, the Bible doesn't say that they spoke to each other. And if they didn't, what do you suppose that Noah was thinking? Chapter 
during all that time in the water, all that time of, of loneliness, I guess, when I mean, he had his family there. And uh, so what do you suppose Noah was thinking during the time of the water? At times he felt forgotten. He might have felt forgotten by God. And uh, it could be that we're there right now. It could be that someone in this room right now is feeling forgotten by God. Um, and you need the assurance that, no, God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. And suppose that that's what the, uh, this chapter is about. That's what Genesis chapter 8 um, is about. Uh, we read the very first sentence in, uh, it says, God remembered Noah. Okay, that's real words of hope there. God remembered Noah. All right, and God remembers you. All right, if you are saved, he remembers you. You. Um, and then it carries on and it says in verse 8, but it's not just Noah that is remembered. And every living thing and all the cattle and all that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over there. So it was just not just Noah, but also all the critters, all the animals that were in there, all the living, every living thing. And uh, there's a passage that Jesus, um, when Jesus was speaking in Luke, um, I've got it up here, you can check me out if you want, but um, it's here, it says there, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? The sparrows is not forgotten before God. But then there's a, there's a hope here in this next verse, but even the very hairs of your head are numbered. All right, some more so than others. Right, not looking at anyone in particular, they're not. But ye are of more value than many sparrows. Are you all more valuable than many sparrows? Right? Not but those sparrows, not one of them is forgotten. So we have a comfort here that you are not forgotten. And while the Lord uh, remembered Noah, uh, we see Noah waiting patiently. And obediently until the ark, uh, until um, in the ark until God tells him uh, to go up. Uh, and then after that, we see that, uh, and we'll look into this a little bit further, uh, a little bit later on, that Noah offered a sacrifice uh, unto the Lord. Uh, so the two themes that we see here, first of all, and we're looking at it, it will be a two-week kind of uh, study, I guess. Uh, so next week we'll look at the second part of it. But the first part of it is, well, God and faithfulness remembers us. So God and faithfulness, he remembers us. And I suppose next week will be our application to him. We by faith must remember God. So while God and faithfulness, he remembers us, we by faith must remember God. All right, so, um, so uh, we'll look at this, um, the first point there to, uh, this morning, while well, God and faithfulness remember us, and then next week we'll uh, get into this, uh, this next point, our application uh, back to God. We, by faith, must remember God. All right, so let's go over to, oh, go over to Genesis chapter um, 19, verse 29. Okay, so we'll look at this word remember when God, uh, when the text says in uh, Genesis chapter 8 that God remembered Noah, it doesn't imply again somehow that he got busy with other things. Noah uh, didn't slip from his mind for a while, uh, then something reminded him uh, and snapped the fingers, oh Noah, that's right, oh, forgot about him. Okay, so that's us, All right, that's how we think and certainly that's what we would do as well, All right, we're going out of our business. Something reminds us, oh, I'm looking after that kid. That's right. Mate, where are you? Yeah. Good. Free. He's sorted. I don't have to say that, actually. I'll just look at the computer and he's probably there anyway. Um, uh, but God doesn't use that, remember, like that. So uh, we'll look at some, some, uh, some cases. Abraham is the first case. Rather, the um, Bible... Uh, in the Bible, when, when we use the word remember, in terms of God, it's used in the sense of God taking action on his promises. Okay? God taking action on his promises. Right? In Genesis chapter 19, verse 29. Um, so God was about to destroy the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
All right, so it throws the uh, background uh, toys. He's about to destroy it. Um, but in Genesis chapter 19, verse 29, it says there, And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham. Right, there's a conversation between God and Abraham. Abraham, oh, if there's 50 people that, that that's righteous, will you destroy it? No. 40? No. 30? No. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but he went whittled down to five. No. There was no one left. But God remembered that conversation. God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot well, right, so God remembered Abraham in that, and he remembered his promise there. Uh, Genesis chapter 30, turn with me there, as we see the example of uh, Rachel. Alright, so barren children was a bit of an issue in, in the in the Old Testament and, and throughout the Bible. Probably not so much in this church, I guess. <laughs> Children being born all the time. Alright. Um, Rachel. Okay. Rachel wanted to bear children, uh, but could not. And we'll read here in uh, chapter 30, verse uh, 22. That, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Okay. God remembered Rachel, what hearkened unto her. Uh, we have uh, Exodus, if you turn with me to Exodus chapter 22, oh, sorry, 2, Exodus chapter 2. Okay, so when Israel was in bondage in Egypt, Alright, not you. Alright, Israel was in bondage, bondage in Egypt. Okay, so they were all good. Alright, Joseph came and uh, Joseph um, saved the whole world basically. And he, and he comes in and, and all the Israelites, they were, they were good people. Alright, uh, yeah, they dwelt among uh, the Egyptians. And uh, then there arose a Pharaoh which knew not Joseph. And then all of a sudden, it kind of went downhill from there. I was actually thinking about that this morning. I was wondering, oh, should I go down that river trial? Oh, well, I'll go a little bit. Okay, I won't go too far. So um, we've got these uh, Israelites who are, uh, <coughs> who are just hanging around, and God has told them what to do. And they're basically, basically living in comfort, right? Living in Egypt, being comfortable. Um, God has already told them to go into the land. Right, God's told them to, to go and, and, and to, to, to find the land. And they didn't. And they didn't. And that made me think, that's exactly the same as, <coughs> as, as the people building the, the tower. They were told to go out and, and to, to go forth and, and multiply and, and spread the earth and, and that sort of thing. Just got comfortable and, and, and just stayed where they were. Staying where you are. And comfortable, and I suppose it kind of challenged me, I guess, and, and this one bring forth to you as well. You know, it's staying where you are isn't necessarily uh, where God wants you. You know, uh, moving forward for Him, or maybe being comfortable where you are, it's not necessarily where you want to be. It's, in fact, in these cases, it definitely wasn't where they wanted to be, and God made it happen. So that they went forth and, you know, for the Israelite people, was for 40 years. Um, they had to go through hardship and bondage, right? And they're here in Exodus chapter 2, verse 24, it says, God heard their groaning. They started groaning about their situation. And so, um, moving along, God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It says that God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant. With Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob. Over to Luke chapter 1, if you could turn with me there. Luke chapter 1. Uh, 
Americans saved Jesus uh, by the Holy Spirit. You see here, her praise of God who remembered his mercy. So look, Matthew, Matthew. He, in verse 54, he had opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. She praised God who remembered his mercy as he had spoken to Abraham and his, his seed, his offspring. I guess the last one we have here now is um, Luke chapter 23. And we see the request of a repentant thief on the cross. Uh, Luke chapter 23. We see in verse 42, his request there. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So here, um, in all these cases, um, Abraham, Rachel, his covenant, uh, his mercy of um, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob there, all these cases, the idea is the same, that God remembers in the sense of there's, there's promises attached to it, and he's taking action on those promises. So and back to our passage we see that God remembered Noah and all those in the ark. So turn back to um, Genesis. If you haven't got a bookmark there, I probably should have told you to put one there. Uh, but Genesis is at the start of the Bible, so it should be hard to get back to. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, so it points to God's faithfulness. From our point of view, it may seem that God has forgotten. And perhaps he has been silent for a long while. But he will act on our behalf, but it's on his timing. It's on God's timing. Uh, he remembers, and he is faithful to those that are his. And God's faithfulness uh, and his remembrance, so God's faithful remembrance is seen in three ways. And we'll look at those three ways uh, Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll look at those three ways this morning. Um, as we see it through one, his past uh, salvation. So God's faithful remembrance is seen as past, uh, in the past through salvation. Uh, secondly, God's faithful remembrance is seen in this promise of a future preservation. And lastly, God's faithful remembrance is seen in his present uh, provision. Okay, so in the past through his salvation, in the future uh, through his pres um, um, preservation right now, right now, through his current provision. Um, so firstly, if you turn with me to uh, Genesis chapter 7, as we see a couple of things here. Uh, so God's past salvation is seen in the ark. Noah and everyone on board the ark uh, had been spared of God's judgment. He judged the world, but everyone that was in the ark was spared. It wasn't a luxury liner. It wasn't a cruise ship. It wasn't... Games happening in one room, and uh, it, was horrible. it was horrible. Um, but those on the board, on board of the ark, were safe. So everyone that was on board was safe. And Noah and his family uh, felt the ark rest on the mountain. And even though God was silent, they knew one thing for certain that by God's grace, they were spared the judgment. And as soon as they hopped out of the ark, they could see the judgment. Uh, a verse. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 7. It reads there, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for I have seen righteous um, before me in this generation. And then over back in 6, yep, Genesis chapter 6, In verse 18 it says, But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons' wife, 
are thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. All right. So that, I suppose the interesting word I want I want to focus on here is the word come. Right, the word come. I, I heard this ages ago, and um, that, that stuck with me ever since. Right, come onto the ark. So if I tied Nathaniel there um, to go to the car, I tell him to go to the car. Right, but in this case, but well, there's no way I would say to him, come to the car, because it just doesn't sound grammatically right. Right, but God here is saying. Come to the ark. Right? Where does God have to be if he's saying come into the ark? He has to be in the ark. Right? So it would make more sense if he said go to the ark, but no, he says come to the ark. And there's an invitation for all, for him, you know, I suppose in the spiritual sense, for all to come into the ark, come into the safety place. Come unto me. Alright? And Jesus says, Come unto me, all then. Um, are weary, right? And heavy laden. Uh, and, and this is the same in 6 verse 18. Come uh, in, uh, come thou, or sorry, uh, 7 verse 1, come thou in all thy house into the ark. The second thing um, I suppose I want to point out is in um, Genesis chapter 7 verse 3 to 16. Oh, sorry, just um, 16 there. It says, and they that went in, went in male and female, of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Right? So again, the Lord invites you, the Holy Spirit convicts, the Holy Spirit is out there convicting all men of their sin. Um, come, freely come, drink of this uh, everlasting water that I have, and also it's him that keeps us. Right? When he shut the door, it was God that shut them in. It's God that keeps us. Right? There's, a, um, uh, there's a, a benediction that we sing, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. All right? You're kind of Yeah, she looks scared as well. Good job as well, by the way, Lizzie. You always seem to get wrong. Yeah, you do a good job. All right? Um, so if you've trusted God by um, God's only means of salvation by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and even if God seems silent at the moment, you can rest assured that you are safe in Jesus Christ. So we see here um, a, a man well, once came to D.R. Moody and said that he was worried because he didn't feel saved. And sometimes that's how we feel. Sometimes we don't feel saved. Um, sometimes we get to a point in our lives it just doesn't, Feel right. But Moody asked, was Noah safe in the ark? And the man said, certainly. Certainly he was. Of course he was safe in the ark. Uh, in the ark. Well, what made him safe? Was it his feeling? Or was it the ark? And I suppose he got the point there. Right? It's got nothing to do with our feelings. Right? It's not our feelings that save us. Christ saves us by his sovereign grace. And if we have trusted in Christ, we know that uh, God in his faithfulness uh, has saved us from his judgment. So when it seems like God has forgotten uh, about you, stop to think about the salvation that God's granted you in Jesus Christ. It's not based on anything that you've done. It's, um, it's found in the grace of God. Right? Noah found grace. Uh, so uh, Genesis 6 chapter 8 uh, says that, that he found grace. Uh, and so has every person that has trusted Christ as Saviour. Now John Newton, a um, uh, preacher of the author Amazing Grace, had this particular verse um, uh, above his uh, mantle on his study. Now uh, John Newton, he was uh, a drunken sailor. He was a slave trader when God saved him. But this is the text that he wanted up there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman, uh, wast, wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Okay, I'll stop there, but this is the verse that it was based on. Thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God hath redeemed thee. Newton wanted to remember that God's faithfulness was seen in his past salvation. God redeemed me. 
Secondly, God's faithful remembrance is seen through his um, future preservation. In case, as I said before, uh, Jude 24, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. So as they come off the ark, we see uh, maybe Noah had some mixed emotions. Uh, maybe, you know, on the one hand, he was grateful that uh, you know, he was saved. On the other hand, there was a God who, um, who had just wiped out every other person in the whole universe. All right? And maybe, uh, maybe there, no, there wasn't, thinking humanistically, uh, that what if we disobey him? And sometimes that comes across our mind, what, what, what will happen? What's going to happen to us? Um, but those whom God saves, right? so we see in his past salvation, but those that he saves, he also keeps you as well. Okay, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Well, it doesn't rest on our faith in Him. It rests on His faithfulness. And uh, chapter 6, verse 18. Uh, chapter 6, verse 18. It says there, But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark. Okay? He establishes His covenant. Okay? With thee I will establish my covenant, is what God was saying there. Uh, while chapter uh, 9 goes into the specifics of God's covenants, God mentions his promise in uh, verse 21 of chapter 8. So if you turn over there, it says there, And the Lord smelled a sweet smelling, uh, smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse um, the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more uh, everything or everything living as I have done. And so uh, we, we see that, um, that God's promise of sparing the earth from such severe judgment is not conditioned on what Noah did. Right? Same as us. It's not conditioned. Our salvation is uh, how it's kept. It's not con conditioned on what you do. Uh, even though uh, we, see, uh, we see in the in the middle of the verse there, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Okay, God, God recognises that man's heart is evil. He really knew that this wouldn't solve sin's issue. He knew that, that it wasn't going to end there, that man wasn't going to repent and there was going to be happy family again. But he was looking towards the cross. Everything was based on a little bit before that where he says, God smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart. Alright, in verse 20 it says, Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered a burnt offering into, into the altar. It was on that offering, it was the sacrifice that was made. And that's what he was looking at unto, is the future sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, um, aren't you glad that for your future deliverance from God's judgment, it depends on God's faithfulness and not yours? Now, while those who know, uh, truly know Christ will be growing in obedience, uh, there isn't a saint alive or has ever lived that has a perfect track record. No one's perfect. All right? A preacher that's preached here before has said that he's come close, but even he admits that he's not perfect, all right? No one ever has been perfect. Uh, all right, so yeah, I suppose the point here, we've got um, Satan who's, who's uh, before God, accusing you day and night, uh, saying, oh man, that Christian, what's, what's he up to, God? And he may even get to you himself, and mate, what are you up to? Is that, is that Christian behaviour? Is that what you should be doing? It says there, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of his brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Okay, so he's accusing you. He's accusing you, yourself. You're no good. You're a filthy sinner. Um, we claim to be a Christian. Look at your sins. How can you expect God to possibly save you? And at such times of doubt. And doubt comes in our life. 
every now and then. There will be doubt. But you're not trusting in your track record. I'm not trusting in my track record. All, right? All our sins as filthy rags, the Bible says. Filthy. Um, all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Thanks, I did hear something. Thanks for that. Cheers. Um, I can correct it because you've yeah. been judged by the camera. Right? Years ago, he, uh, he used to talk about um, uh, putting things on there. Right? At some point, I might need to put some, what is it, hankies or something like that. Right? Just to, yeah, thank you. I kind of feel it kind of hot, eh? It feels like it's running down there. Um, so Satan likes to, um, to accuse you, and maybe it comes from yourself uh, as well, but you're not trusting on yourselves, you're trusting on the faithfulness of God, who says all their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. What a blessing that is. Right? All their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. I'm trusting in the word which declares that he uh, so Philippians ch chapter 1 verse 6 He um, of which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ so if he's already begun a good work in you he is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ alright uh, so it's not on you God can do it alright um Thus, God's faithful remembrance is seen through past salvation, also seen um, uh, in the promise of his uh, future pres preservation of his people from judgment. Uh, lastly, we see it's uh, seen in his present uh, provision. His present provision. Uh, God had provided all that Noah and his family needed to survive both on the ark and once they set foot on dry land. So